started with this picture right here. Now, we have about 33,000 kids that attend Oklahoma City Public Schools. Each one of them are unique, and they have uh, lots and lots and lots, lots of things to be proud of. But what we ask ourselves uh, continuously in our district is do we have an expectation that our kids have the ability to compete with other kids around the state? other kids around the nation, around the globe, for things like jobs, scholarship opportunities, college career placement, military appointment. And our answer is always yes, we have that expectation that our kids and our district should compete. So the next question is, do we offer the same level of opportunity to our kids in our KCPS today as the kids that we expect them to compete with? And our answer is sometimes. We, we want the answer to be yes, we do. We offer the same level of opportunity to all of our kids so that they can compete with everybody else. So this is why this is kid-driven. This is about opportunities for our students. So here's a graphic that gives you an idea of the investment that Oklahoma City Public Schools has made into our kids and into our school district through bonds, through a bond program. And so we've thrown out uh, three different districts up there just for comparison's sake. The one I want you to look at because, quite frankly, they're very similar to us is the one on the top of the Tulsa Public Schools. So what this is telling us is that if you think about a student in OKCPS that graduated last year, then rewind all the way back to that student's first grade year. In that period of time, first grade to 12th grade, we have brought about $5,000 per student into our district through bond funds for opportunities for these kids. At the same time, Tulsa Public has spent $34,000 per kid during that same first grade and 12th grade time period. And so why is it so important? We've talked about the competition. Uh, we have uh, 62 school buildings in our district that kids attend school in uh, daily. The average age is 72 years old. We have nine schools that are 100 years old or older. Now, I'm not suggesting that just because something is old, it doesn't work anymore. What I'm suggesting is there are inefficiencies that begin to pop up. And we uh, have been addressing those inefficiencies by putting band-aids on things, by repairing things over and over and over again. And there comes a point in time where we look around and say, is it time to do something different? And in this case, we think in a number of areas, it is time to do something different. And so those are some of the reasons. And so in a nutshell, what does a bond program do? Yes, it builds buildings. We're going to look at some of that now. But it also helps us to run the school district. So really, the way, the, the way that I would describe it to you is this. All of those things we showed you, our kids need. If you don't have a healthy bond fund, then you have a bond in August of 2026. 26, 27 school year, should this pass, we would have students in the new schools. So we moved to Capitol Hill High School. Uh, there are a handful of you in the room who I know graduated from Capitol Hill High School. There's nothing that I'm going to show this group that's going to change anything about the sentimental value of this group. Um, so I'm not intending to do that. What I'm going to show you is new spaces, new opportunities for kids. And then I want to show you something that we want to do because we've heard from many of you and others how important this building is. And so what we want to do is show you what we think we can do uh, to preserve some of it. Uh, talk to some of you, not enough for some of you, uh, because I know many of you want to preserve the entire building. Uh, and so what we want to show you is some slides that, that uh, give you an idea of what a new building would look like. So here's an area of view. If you look up to the top right, you can see kind of a shadow of where the existing building sits right now. And then the dark gray would be the graphic of what the new building would look like on the front from a footprint standpoint. So upper right, existing kind of shadow, and then the dark gray would be what the existing, or I'm sorry, the new footprint would look like. All right, let's go to the next slide. So here is the current entrance. So I'll walk through it. I think most of you did. You came in the other time. It's the current fence.
science behind calories. And so what we want to do is preserve this. And then as you walk through it, you walk into uh, a pavilion. So it's a legacy plaza, it's an alumni plaza, whatever you want to call it. And as we move through the entrance, or as we get through there, we walk into a pavilion area. This would be for use from the community. And if you see the stage underneath that covering, it is exactly where this stage sits today. So what we're trying to do is save a portion of the nostalgia, the architecture, and we know it's not the school. But this would get used from the community, it would get used from our student body. Uh, lots of different things can happen in this space. And so that is a, a feature that we're going to bring to this project. All right, let's move and look at some of the new spaces. So this is the front view of the new high school, the concept or a rendering of the new high school. On the left, you see the main entrance. On the right, you see the arena. And then down the middle is the courtyard uh, area, the walkway area where lots of different things can happen with kids. Uh, just another view of the parking. You see the, again, the main entrance. And another perspective, you can kind of see here a little bit better view of that courtyard area. It has locking gates there, so uh, as the school day starts, we can lock this entire courtyard area off. Uh, you see on the right uh, one of the features, and you see on the left other learning spaces. And this is all behind the stage. Yes, behind the stage. Uh, another view, now as you look at this view, this is just further down, and to the right, you really can't see the field, and that's the stadium. And then the white section of this building would be uh, for your student athletes. So it would be locker rooms, uh, it would be coaches' offices, training rooms, all the things that would come uh, with a new facility. That on one side, you see all the glass, that's the new arena. On the right side is the stadium, and so it's a shared space for student athletes. Another perspective of that corridor that exists in between the two buildings, a lot of different flexible uses. Uh, our teachers are very creative and they will find opportunities for that space. Here you see uh, the softball field, and it's where it's tucked in on the back side of the facility. You see walkways all around the facility, stadium to your left. Now this is on the other end of that walkway, so this is a bridge that connects the two buildings. So your athletics area with your academic area, a lot of different uses there. You can actually program classrooms in that space. It could simply be a, a bridge walkway from one area to the other. Uh, and then as you can see, there's an enormous amount of space where kids can gather, classes can, can form, we can do lots of things. Here's the entrance to the field house, uh, which would take the place in this concept of our current field house. I want to get inside of it so that you can see what it looks like. So as we walk into the arena, you have features that you would expect. A ticket booth, trophy cases. You can see kind of in the back toward the middle, on the left-hand side, which are called learning stairs or learning steps. So we can have classes uh, meet there. A lot of different things. And here's a concept of what the arena might look like. So if you take the stairs toward the back up, you're going to have another flexible space. So it can be used to host events. It can be used as classroom space. It can be used to view uh, athletic opportunities, fine arts opportunities. And then here would be a, just a different corner of so I'm standing in the corner looking out across the stadium, uh, excuse me, the auditorium. And this seats, conceptually, right out about the same number of people that the current field house seats. So we think uh, things like graduations that currently take place in the Capitol Hill field house can take place here. So here is all of that put together in a video that we will prepare Thank you very much for putting this together and we'll take you on a quick tour of the new facilities.
So what I want to do is, is wrap up this portion uh, kind of the way I began and end. 